fine and then quickly we'll complete this chapter after studying few more reactions that we have already studied this that will be a quick revision just so let's begin I began with styrene. On this styrene, I'm adding H plus H2O. And you know by this time what is H plus H2O. H plus H2O is the reagent for carrying out hydration or hydrolysis. We get A. On A, I add PCC. We get B. On B, if we are adding NH2, NH2 in a basic medium. Which reaction is this by the way? You are getting C. Right? On B, if we add NaOH and iodine, we get D plus E. E happens to be yellow in color. On E, if we add phenol, along with KOH, then we get F. On D, if you are adding soda, lime and heat, you are going to get G, G plus H. H is a gas. On G, if you are adding zinc and ozone, you are going to get I. On I, if you add a base, you are going to get G. Alright, let me increase it a little bit. On D, if you add M, C, P, B, A. On K, actually, if you add M, C, P, B, A, you get D. And... Uh, On K, if you add L, you are going to get styrene back. So find out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K and L. So uh, this will be a good practice for you for the reaction that we have studied recently in this chapter. And important reactions of this chapter has been used in this conversion problem. So solve it. Enjoy this conversion problem. Write down the structure corresponding to all the compounds unknown A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, K, and L, and then match your answers as we'll be writing here. Work it out first yourself. Now let's begin solving this. We'll start from A because styrene has been given. The reagent has been given, so A we would know. Styrene, you know what styrene is. Styrene is this. When you are adding H plus H2O, this will be hydration. H will add here, OH will add here because it is a Markovnikov addition. This is what A is. You should not have any trouble in identifying this because this hydration we have studied in the chapter hydrocarbon. We had many practice after that. This is what your A is. PCC is pyridinium chlorochromate. It carries out oxidation of 2 degree alcohol to ketone. We studied this in the method of preparation of ketone and aldehyde. There should not be any problem in identifying that B is acetophenone. From B to C is the latest reaction that we have studied, wolf kishner reduction. So you know this wolf kishner reduction and C, you know what will happen. This oxygen will go and 2 hydrogen will come in. This is the alkane that you are going to get. This is C. On B, if you are adding NaOH I2, we know what this is. Suppose uh, you are adding NaOH I2 and then in the second step, you are also protonating it. Fine. So when you are protonating it, then you are getting D and E. E is yellow and you know what that yellow thing is. That yellow thing is iodoform. We have studied it. There should not be any problem. And D would be benzoic acid. So I am taking a jump quickly, assuming that we had enough practice and there will be no trouble in identifying that D is benzoic acid and E is iodoform. Then on D, you are using something. Now this reaction is 
the reaction that we studied in the chapter of hydrocarbon in the method of preparation of alkane. So this is soda lime decarboxylation. This is acid. This is soda and lime and heat. This reaction is soda lime decarboxylation reaction. You can quickly search on YouTube for this soda lime decarboxylation to Collegepedia. That video will come in if you don't know this reaction. So in this reaction, what happens? This acid group goes away in the form of CO2, and this H gets directly bonded with the R group that is being attached to this carboxylic acid group. So G will be benzene. This is CHH, phenyl group and H, this is benzene. G is benzene, no problem in identifying that and H gas is carbon dioxide gas. We are adding ozone to benzene. Now when we studied ozonolysis, we practiced a problem in which when you carry out ozonolysis of benzene, what will you get? We did it when we studied ozonolysis. So you should face no trouble in identifying the product I. I will be 3 glyoxyl coming out of it. Right? 3 molecules of glyoxyl will come out when you carry out ozonolysis of this benzene. So this I is glyoxyl. CHO, CHO. CHO, CHO. Fine? This I is glyoxyl and this is interesting. On glyoxyl, you are adding NaOH, you are getting J. So, what this J is? Now, NaOH either can be an acid, it can act as a base or it can act as a nucleophile. There is no question of basicity here because there is no acidic hydrogen here. This we discussed when we studied Canizaro reaction. So, it cannot act as a base. The other option is to act as a nucleophile, but NaOH do not act as a nucleophile when it is in dilute form. So it has to be in concentrated form, although not mentioned here, but based on your wisdom and based upon your experience of previous reactions, based upon your experience of Canizaro reaction, you must be able to identify that this NMH is a concentrated NMH, otherwise there will be no reaction. And indeed there is a reaction because you have a product J. This NMH is a concentrated base. No problem. Which reaction is this by the way? This is aldehyde, you are adding a base, you are adding a concentrated base, that base will become a nucleophile. Which reaction is this? This is a Canizaro reaction. When we studied Canizaro reaction, we solved a problem on which we added NOH to this glyoxyl. Canizaro reaction is a reaction in which disproportionation occurs. One of the aldehyde is oxidized, the other aldehyde group is reduced. Fine. So it's a redox reaction. And one of the aldehyde group will be oxidized into the carboxylate form and the other aldehyde will be reduced to alcohol. So, J would be This is what J is. You should be able to identify this. This is an important problem. When ITG asked this, this particular reaction on moving from I to J, they gave glyoxyl, they gave NOH, and they were asking for what J would be or what the product would be. So the product would be this. We had this practice when we studied Canizaro reaction. No more discussion on this. This J is done. Now let's come here. This K. K is left out. MCPBA, I have taught you before. MCPBA, we studied when we studied. Bare Villiger oxidation. MCPBA is meta chloroperoxybenzoic acid. Peroxybenzoic acid carries out, or peroxy acid for that matter, carries out oxidation of carbonyl compound. Now, what happens there? To quickly recapitulate you, you take a carbonyl compound like this. Oxygen gets inserted between one group and C double bond O. Now, let's see what this D is. This D is what is D? D is benzoic acid. Fine. Look, what happens in bare villiger reaction? What does MCPB do is it inserts oxygen. Here we see oxygen. So this oxygen must be inserted. So prior to insertion, how should be the carbonyl group? This is the carbonyl compound. So when you insert oxygen, it becomes this. So what should be K? K should be this benzaldehyde. No trouble? No trouble. So K is benzaldehyde. Now, 
you have to identify L. Now, what is L? You have this benzaldehyde and you're reaching to styrene. What is styrene, by the way? This is a styrene. Now, how would you reach from benzaldehyde to styrene? Now, there is one reaction that we have studied that converts C double bond O to C double bond C. How does that happen? You take a elide of phosphorus by a Wittig reaction, it happens. And when you, by, for Wittig reaction, you have to take a elide of sulfur because you see, from benzaldehyde to moving to, on, on going from benzaldehyde to styrene, one carbon is increased. That one carbon must be coming from this elide of phosphorus. So if, this, if, you, if you have this elide, then this CH2 and this carbon would be merged to give you styrene. We had this practice when we studied, uh, what did we study? When we studied Wittig's reaction. All the things were done before, there shouldn't be any trouble. In case you could not identify any one of them, then you should think and ponder why did you not, why were you not able to do it when all the things were done before. After pondering, then you should Go back and study those reactions and practice the mechanism of those reactions so that those reactions are engraved into your mind and your blood vessels so that next time you don't miss them out. Now, note down this conversion problem on a page and then keep looking at it and solving it many times after few days. When you start to forget, when you have a tendency of forgetting the reactions, solve this conversion problem. It will make you revise all the reactions, most of the reactions that we have studied in this chapter. And that's the only way out to keep all the reactions in your mind intact. So after a few days, if you're able to solve this, or if you, you were able to get all the answers correct, that's very, very good. After a few days, a week or 10 days, revisit this conversion problem and see if you are getting your answers as quick as you got it now. If you're not getting your answers or if you're not getting it quickly, then revise the reactions or just go through the conversion problem that will itself make you revise all the reactions. Fine. So this chapter is done except for few reactions that we have studied before. So we'll quickly go through those reactions and we will formally declare this chapter to be completed.